G'day everybody, it's Rob and Miller from Fireflight Photo. Uh, we're going to give you a very quick overview of the van. This is our 118 wheelbase Ram Pro Master 1500 uh, low roof. Um, we've pretty well finished the build so and we've got about a 17 or 18 video tutorial series coming up on our build as we went along and we figured it might be helpful to see the finished product so you knew what it is we were building or what it is you potentially might want to be interested in as part of the build. Um, there's a couple of reasons we went for the low roof and we went for the 118. We have a 136 high roof and we started to build it out prior to this and even though it serves a purpose as our craft fair van for our photography um, we just felt when we went on certain trips to smaller areas like out the backwoods with moosing and and whatever we felt it was a too tall and too difficult to get anything on the roof like a canoe or a kayak and uh, even though it was a bit more comfortable to stand up in and the extra 18 inches in length was was good we also felt that it was just too long and too big for certain areas so the compromise that we came up with is the 118 wheelbase which of course is the smallest ProMaster uh, van they make and, and you know it, it's awesome it's uh, we're not going to live in it so this isn't a van life living out of it you know everything in it this is a a glorified camper, a glorified tent, uh, a vehicle that pretty well has everything we need to camp in it, but ready to drive out the driveway. Um, so there's a couple of things. We, we didn't put um, um, swivel seats in it because uh, the seats are kind of raised four inches from the floor here. So by putting swivel seats, you kind of end up in with your legs kind of hanging in the air. And not just that, it actually prevents us from having some critical items we have, like the extra cabinetry across the back, which is actually an emergency toilet on the right. It's a, it's a glorified bucket with, uh, you know, compost, um, peat moss, uh, proper toilet seat and everything's got a double lid. And we also have a, a box that pretty well fills the space between the two front seats uh it's made out of marine grade plywood it has a lid and it has a little carpet on top that our dog sits on so a it forms a function as the dog seat when we're traveling and b it's made the exact size to fit our uh, coleman cooler so we fill it with about uh, eight drinks each 16 drinks and and then we put it on ice and that's where we kind of take our day-to-day -day drinks from as we're driving around hiking wherever and that way we're not going into the, the main cooler everything in the main is made from marine grade plywood except the main cabinets they're made out of uh, um, cabinet grade um, Baltic birch plywood three quarter and uh, poplar edging and the bed is made out of fairly standard plywood we just put two or three coats of uh, polyurethane on it but the rest of it the ceiling the wall panels the door panels they're all made out of marine grade plywood uh, what you're looking at is the front of the bed on the left hand side is our 1200 watt yeti inverter that is actually being trickle charged as we drive from a cigarette outlet outlet at the back of the van there's two light switches which turn on the main cabin LED lighting. Above that is a little uh, outlet that has extra additional 120 volt outlets and a couple of USB ports. The middle section is just extra storage. Right now we're using it for extra water. Then you've got the microwave on the right hand side and below that is a drawer for any additional storage. Uh, what we have here is a 24 inch uh, LED screen. It could either be as a small TV or we're going to be using it for playing some small movies on the road but mainly for photo and video editing. Uh, there's a little cupboard up in the top right hand corner. There's some hanging hooks. You can see one of our backpacks hanging there. And the box with the green towel covering it on the left of that downstrip with the six black screws in it 
that's actually storage that extends about a foot underneath the bed and on the right hand side that's actually the toilet section which is uh, a bucket with uh, compost and that kind of thing and it's emergency use only this is not everyday generic use it's just absolutely we felt that if there was some emergency it was better to have it than to not have it uh, you're looking behind the driver and passenger seat now and um, we've put some supporting wood panels that are bolted to the base of the seats and that's what gives that support running across and the portable solar panel is on the left between the two seats that's its stored position it's a double 100 watt panel that plugs into the Yeti inverter and on the right hand side is the uh, uh, water filtration um, uh, system with the common theme throughout our build is to use as little power as possible so to use as little electricity as possible and to be as self-sufficient as we can so um, we don't have a whole heap of electrical items in there you know we've got the microwave and we've got the TV screen and then we've got six LED lights that's really the only thing that plugs into our power source because uh, we're trying to minimize that kind of usage so uh, the blue which is the water system on the right also has a filtration in it that takes out 99% of all germs so in other words we could technically uh, get dirty water from a creek or a river and filter out clean drinkable safe water you may just be able to see it at this angle but in between the two seats you'll see a little carpet mat and uh, a box there that's the box I was talking about earlier that holds our uh, drink cooler and has about 16 drinks on ice that we uh, take from as we're on the road or in the field. That way we're not opening the main cooler. Alright, the whole idea here is to be as self-sufficient as we can. So we uh, open up the back doors here and we reveal the modifications that we've done. So all the stuff on the doors is marine grade plywood. We came up with these little custom curtains that help us sleep at night. This is a trucker's mattress, uh, 75 by 60 wide, so it's 75 long that way by 60 inches wide and it's four inches thick. It's beautiful to sleep on. I'm six foot two, I sleep across ways. Yes, it is a little bit tight for a six two person. Uh, anything six one and under would be awesome um, so occasionally I might just put my angles on a, on a slight angle uh, we got the cabinets here uh, both sides almost like saddlebag cabinets we made these a bit taller so this is our head end and believe it or not even when you try to sit up they're out of the range of what would normally hit your head we installed the two windows in the sleeping area that's our ventilation and that's why we decided to go with the smaller longer windows so we could put these kind of saddlebag cupboards above both windows uh, we have a light switch in the back here for one set of lights that uh, allows us to uh, put on the lights for the cooking area apparently my wife has turned them off and uh, this is what we call our kitchen module and it pulls out like this and it locks in position in the extended position so if we're parked on a bit of a hill then it won't slide in and out we also on each door have these two locking shelves that lock in position and this either we eat from or use when we're doing cooking they just lift up and lock into position this is the kitchen module in its kind of uh, cooking configuration. We got the one pound bottle that's on the end. We just plug the hose in every time we go to cook. We carry three one pound bottles with us in those plastic bottles that are underneath the cooker. Uh, the cooker is held on by magnets so it's removable in case you want to say pull it out and put it on a picnic table. We did replace the original solid pipe. It was a solid copper pipe that came out of the connection from the cooker to the bottle. We replaced that with a flexible hose pipe as an accessory from Amazon.
uh, in the containers underneath the cooker are coffee, tea, utensils, three bottles of one, uh, three one pound bottles of propane. We find a bottle of propane lasts us about five days, depending on how much we cook, uh, but that's not bad. And um, we also have various utensils, cups, coffee cups. On the left hand side uh, is a breadboard. It's actually just held in with a uh, non-slip mat. And we've just come back from a three week trip to Yellowstone, 8,600 miles at uh, average of 19.4 miles per gallon. And during that whole time that uh, nylon breadboard that's sitting on top did not move. So, and underneath that is a, a pot and a pan and then some more utensils and stuff like that for cooking. So everything we need for cooking is in that what we call the kitchen module. Uh, to the left and the right of uh, these two modules there is actually a small one foot by one foot storage area that's the height. We use it for more obscure items that we hardly access because while you can reach in for smaller items it actually requires that you just lift the bed and pull out a lid and then there's that storage area underneath there. Uh, so we've got a kind of semi-industrial look with most of the screws and things exposed. This is our Yeti drawer which is our refrigeration. It's got two locking positions. It's got the locking position just for when you access the cooler. Again we didn't want to plug something in so we rely on a mixture of frozen Yeti blocks if we're doing a short week, week and a half trip. If we're doing a longer trip, we have waterproof um, containers from Walmart that we store ice in and we find that we have to replace the ice in it every say two and a half to three days depending on the temperature. And that way we can just lock that up and we have everything we need for our, this is our food source or food supply. So we try not to store too many drinks or any drinks in here except maybe milk. Uh, behind it is uh, a tarp and some foldable tent poles. That's what we use for an awning when we want. And then we also have a large storage area behind it, which is fairly big. And right now it's got some camera gear and stuff in it, but you've got this whole storage area here. Alright, we uh, bought the H3 rack system, our 3 rack system from Mantec and that's the roof rack system that we uh, decided to work because it's what we had on our 136 wheelbase and I had this custom roller thing made for our canoe or for our kayak and I didn't go with a standard one because I didn't like their thin plasticky, not really strong looking rollers so I just ordered this roller it's actually a real conveyor roller from an industrial supply company then I went to a local welding store or welding uh, shop and had them make this little canoe roller for me that's attached to uh, two of the three racks on the roof rack it, it mounts underneath those and with this system I put this canoe up here by myself but basically you just get the edge of the front of the canoe on the roller and then one person can more or less roll it up and flip it up into place. Alright, this may not seem like a big deal and you may not even know what you're looking at, but this little aluminum strip is actually uh, two pieces of a right angle aluminum that I got from Lowe's and cut. And the reason I cut it is it wasn't just good enough to have a right angle aluminum to make the drip edge. I actually wanted the, this edge to go below the edge in here so it's more like an offset T and the reason being that whatever water comes out here doesn't roll back in it actually drips from this edge so basically this is a custom made drip edge that I made uh, and it stops all the water that comes from here from going down inside the van and it runs out either end if there is anything that flows over it actually drips from out here which is further out than the van and, and drips right past it so I wish there was some off the shelf thing that you could buy but we ended up custom making this little drip edge and it really does serve a valuable function.